a clip-on ring light. This is designed to clip onto your phone. Well, let me get it out and show you. It's not actually for taking pictures of people's rings. It's purely for circular illumination to provide uh, even illumination around objects from all directions. So here is my little uh, micro camera. It's a little Moto G6. Uh, the thing clips open like this. You clip it on. And ideally with a ring light, the camera would be right in the middle. But with these, it just tends to be where it lands. So it depends on where your camera actually has that. Oh, the front's already tried popping off. That's excellent. Um, but then you try and get around your, your camera there. And when you actually point at a surface, it provides even illumination. I have tried it for macro photography. It wasn't very good. Uh, the small ring just created dots of light in the image. So these dated rechargeable cells are now in. Let's try it out. Here's a button. One comes on at low intensity. Is there any flicker? No, it's not. Uh, that's good. That, that means the pulse of modulation is fairly good. High setting and then off. So uh, low, medium and high. That's what you're getting. What happens if I hold the button in? Oh, it actually goes into a strobe mode. That is just absolutely... I'm sorry, I did not know it was going to do that. Uh, it makes a change in the SOS. Right, tell you what. Now we've done that, now we've seen it. Let's get my little other camera out of the way and we'll take this to bits. So this is already trying to pop off. That makes a refreshing change. The other one I use, uh, that was glued on and broke off quite dramatically. This one appears to just unclip, revealing that the LEDs actually almost look like they're in parallel. Hold on, where's the meter? Let's uh, use it in diode to make the LEDs light. I don't think they're going to be in the series. It'd be very odd if they were. Hold on. Are they? Uh, not really getting anything conclusive here. Not getting anything lighting at all. Maybe it's because my probes are blunt and not quite reaching to the solder joints. Uh, I'll try in these connections again. Nope. Nothing. Okay. Oh, I saw a little glitch there. Nope, nothing. Uh, that's a waste of time then. But I shall be able to de deduce it from the circuitry. So are there any hidden screws? Let's get the batteries out. I shall zoom in just a little tiny bit. Not too much, because uh, otherwise it gets a bit cramped. Uh, oh, I think I'm going to need my spudger for this. Spudger. My Isis Samuel Spudger. This is still the original one. I, I do have a spare on standby. All the other clones of these just broke. The Isis Samuel just seems to be the magic, correct mix of metal that it just works really well. So this is popped off. Is there anything holding this in? Ooh, that's quite easy. Right. Okay. Circuitry looks very straightforward. Let's take a closer look. One moment, please. And resume. There is an unpopulated section of this circuit board, which it turns out is a charger with potential for a USB port and a charge control chip for a lithium cell, but it's not used. They've got the batteries coming on to this end of the circuitry here, and it is just three, uh, two AAAs. Let me show you that end of the circuit board. I'm going to have to zoom out a bit now. I'm not, just a little tad. Okay. So there we've got a generic flasher chip. It's the sort of thing you'd find in bike lights. I guess it might be a microcontroller or dedicated function chip, particularly given it's got the strobing mode. And that uh, has a power supply going to it, positive and negative. It's got a switch input pulling to ground, uh, and then it's got the output going straight to a J3Y transistor, which is an NPN transistor, and then the LEDs. Things worthy of note, there is the option here to put a resistor across here and then connect the LEDs negative down to here. But the positive goes straight to the LEDs, but it just gives you the option. In this case, they're not using a resistor, which is kind of naughty. They're just relying on, well, the low voltage of the three volt batteries and perhaps the wire resistance and track resistance. It's a bit shady. Um, the circuitry at the other side, though, is kind of interesting because it is based on a classic LTH7 chip. There's the position for the programming resistor. This looks like a capacitor position. Uh, then there's another 
there's a resistor here for the LEDs and then it's using a little trick with the LEDs that it's only got one control line but it can actually toggle between the two of them. Um, I shall show you the schematic and it will all make sense. Here is the schematic. Here's the bit that's completely missing. So the USB could potentially come on uh, and there's a decoupling capacitor then there's one resistor feeding the two LEDs. If the unit is charging, it pulls the negative of this LED low, and because this LED will be chosen to have a lower voltage, maybe it's a red LED to show it's charging, then uh, it will actually pull the voltage on this resistor down to the point that this LED won't light. So while this LED is lit, that one can't because it's not exceeding its forward, reverse, forward bias voltage. When this chip is finished charging, it turns this LED off, and then the current just flows straight through the resistor and through that LED and shows green for charged. There is a resistor for programming the current, and then it would normally go over to the rechargeable cells, but in this case, they've got two AAAs instead of the lithium. I think it would be better to have a protected lithium, but having said that, uh, if it, that would just protect if the voltage went down so low that... Uh, it went below, say, about 3 volts. But at that point in time, with the resistor, the intensity of these is getting, going to get quite low. And usually the cutoff point of the protection chip is 2.5 volts. And at 2.5 volts, these LEDs won't be passing much current at all. There might be a little bit of a gate, uh, base current in this uh, transistor, though. But it would be dim or out. But you could use a protected cell. There is a decoupling capacitor for the flasher chip. Uh, I should have shown that over this side. It would be more accurate. But it's uh, actually right across the flasher chip. Uh, it has the button pulling that input pin down to the zero volt rail to actually toggle through the modes and then it's straight out to an NPN transistor J3Y rated 500 milliamp that then lights the LEDs. That is it. It's very straightforward and it is designed to be uh, multiple use type scenarios. So what else can we do with this? If you bought one of these, it may be worth actually just taking the LEDs out of it the LED ring, because that's a fairly useful low voltage LED ring. It is just three volts it requires. You could actually make a little USB cable for it. Oh, tell you what, where's the spudger? That's a crack tool to get this off. Spudge. Let's whip that out. This is basically just a little conduit going down into the bottom there just to protect the wires. And a stiff spring in the middle. Let's power it up. I don't think there's a resistor in these. There isn't. It's just a marker for negative and positive. Let's get the bench power supply on. And see how evenly they light at very low current. Because I got the feeling that uh, there was a bit of LED mismatching in the PCB. But then it is a cheap thing. It's not really expensive. Technically speaking, I should have actually put those wires through the other side. But I didn't. Uh, technically speaking, I should get crocodile clips that grip super thin wires. Power on. Uh, let's turn the overhead light off. Let's zoom down in this. I could take the exposure off, but let's get a more accurate indication. So if I turn the voltage way down, turn, turn the voltage way down, not super duper LED matching here. I see a dim one here. But they're, they're not too bad. And a dim one under there. But, uh, as I turn it up, then you end up with a really bright uh, LED light. What's uh, around about 3 volts? It's 250 milliamps. I'm just shorting things together, aren't I, here? Uh, it's not bad. Right, the light is coming back. Watch your eyes. The light is back. Uh, so it has its uses. As a little LED PCB. That's flickering because I'm getting a bad connection with the connections, I think, here. Either that or it's flickering because it's got a dodgy LED, but I don't think so. So that's interesting enough. I shall turn that off. I shall zoom back out. So that's what you get. I think this was about £2 uh, from One Below in the UK. It's a sort of pound shop. Uh, but this was one of their slightly more in a pound range. It's okay, actually. It's a very basic setup. It's the most rudimentary control possible, and it just has a fairly useful little LED ring just that you could use for other applications. If you connected a, a resistor and a USB supply to it, you could actually mount it actually round the lens of a camera. But uh, having said that, if you're wanting super-duper brightness, this would be quite a, a close-range thing. If you want super-duper brightness, you might better going for a dedicated light. But there we go.
interesting stuff. It's still quite a lot for your money. It's really not too bad at all.